Hi everyone, I'm Mike. This is the Sunday Art Show. And this week I'm going to try and paint a cow in around about 10 minutes. So the cow I'm painting this week is a belted Galloway cow. So a very distinctive animal, totally black except for a huge single white stripe around its midriff. And uh, one of my favourite animals to paint actually, something I've painted you know, quite a few times over the years. Now the self-imposed rules for this challenge are the 10 minutes applies to painting time only for the animal. So I'm not counting any time that I use up mixing up paint. And, and the reason for that is, um, you know, I could pre-prepare my mixtures of paint and save myself a lot of time. And I'm not counting the time that I use to paint the background either. And, you know, bottom line, this is just a bit of fun to try and kind of gently push myself to become more and more efficient. So, you know, we'll see how it goes. Let's see how far I get. So I'm starting out with A2 mixed media paper. And you can see I haven't done any initial drawing at all. So I haven't used a pencil or anything like that. Instead, what I'm doing is using a quarter inch wide flat synthetic brush. And then with a mixture of burnt umber and just a little bit of titanium white, interactive acrylic paint, what I'm doing is I'm just blocking in the shape of the animal. So essentially I'm building up a silhouette. So really for this stage, the only bit of drawing I'm doing is the little bit I'm doing right now where I just kind of outline the white stripe which goes around the middle of the animal that I mentioned earlier. And this is quite a nice way to work because we all have a tendency, or you know, I certainly do, that when I look at something, you know, I love drawing. So even when I'm painting, I have a tendency to, to put in outlines of things. And, you know, that's one of the, the ways we learn to draw and the, one of the ways, you know, we continue to draw. And there's nothing, nothing wrong with that. But this is a different way of working. It's just to kind of block in areas of tone. So you can see just by doing that, I've kind of created a sense of three dimensions just by kind of scumbling in and loosely brushing in that burnt umber tone. It already looks a little bit like uh, a belted Galloway cow. And now what I'm doing is coming in over the top of that with a much darker tone. So although these cows are black, I rarely use black paint. I, I do use black paint sometimes, but it's fairly rare. And in this case, what I'm doing is I've mixed up the burnt umber with a lot of ultramarine blue. So that's created a very deep dark bluey brown, which is pretty close to black, but it just adds a little bit more pop to the painting uh, to have that hint of blue in there. And what I'm doing is I'm going back over my initial work. And as I do that, I'm refining the silhouette. So if a bit is a little bit too lumpy or there's a bit too much of a dip or just generally the wrong shape in the outline of the silhouette, then, you know, I'm adjusting that as I go. And as I'm applying this second layer of paint, I'm taking you know, a reasonable amount of care to put the paint down in a direction of brush stroke, which will help further describe the animal. And one of the things I'm noticing as I work around the animal is I've made the body of the animal too short. Now, part of that, I think, was an error in my first setup with the burnt umber, my first you know, painted silhouette. But I think in addition, the error has been compounded because as I put this darker tone on top, I made the head a little bit bigger than it was. And because of that, the body needs to get bigger in proportion. So um, so that's kind of the idea with this 10 minute challenge, really. I don't really mind you know, if I can do it in 10 minutes, I'll be you know well chuffed. But, um, you know, I don't really mind if I don't. But it's a, just a good way to kind of make myself think with that miniature deadline. Say, OK, how am I going to do this in the most efficient way possible? So you can see I'm gradually just increasing the length of the, the leg there a little bit. And you can see the front half of the animal, even though it's more or less just a silhouette, there is, you know, I feel there's a certain amount of life in there already, the little fluffiness of the ear on the right. Now I'm just lowering the outline of the belly. And here really is the first major correction. You can see that I'm lengthening the body quite considerably 
you know, the, the width of that white stripe in the middle has been increased by, you know, at least 50%. And so, correspondingly, the hind quarters of the animal, they've been stretched out to the left, to the left as well. And so hopefully the proportions are, you know, much better than they were as I start to place the hind quarters on the paper. So I'm what, you know, five and a half minutes in and you know, considering there was no initial drawing, obviously it's not finished, but, you know, I've got a belted Galloway cow, reasonably well proportioned and drawn on the, on the paper there. Needs a tail, of course, which I'm just indicating now. And then, although the stripe is white, I've gone back to the burnt umber and more, you know, a much larger proportion of the titanium white to put in an off-white as the base colour there. And then what I can do is just pick out little areas later where the light is catching to, um, you know, just to highlight those key areas. Because, you know, all white things, they aren't, you know, it's, it's not a white pigment, it's just they scatter all the wavelengths of light. So white things are rarely pure white everywhere when you look at them. They're, they're generally speaking, off-white, subtle shades of different colours. And then there are a few key parts which are brilliant white, where the, where the light is just bouncing off them like a mirror. Bit of a cast shadow on the ground. So I guess I could have stopped the clock here at this stage, actually, now that I think about it, because the cast shadow isn't really, the, um, isn't really part of the animal. And an adjustment to the top of the rear end there. And then because I changed the rear end, obviously I just needed to adjust the line of the middle of the back as well. Now, as I said on screen there, I've stopped the clock for the moment because I'm working on the background. Up until now, as mentioned, I've been using interactive acrylics. And one of the reasons I wanted to do this quick experiment was to see how, how this technique would work. And by that I mean I've painted the animal first and now I'm coming in with a dilute wash of watercolour and I'm putting that in for the background. So, you know, one might conventionally put the background in first, but I wanted to try the reverse. And as you can see, around the head, uh, the acrylic is kind of repelling the watercolour wash. You can see it above the animal as well. So it's creating kind of an interesting halo effect. Um, and that's something I, if I've experienced that before, it's not something I've done in a long time. So, so I'm kind of learning with these little experiments as well. But uh, the watercolour, as you can see in the sky, has run a little bit and done its own thing. And so the interactive acrylics are really good in that way as well. You can spray them and get them to move around on the paper, but they aren't quite as fluid as watercolour. So I thought it would be a nice combo to use the watercolour in the background after I blocked in the animal and then just see how the, how the acrylics and watercolour complement each other. And so with that in mind, I just sprayed the surface of the painting with water, and you can see the, the sky running down further. And what I'm doing now is I just want to kill that halo effect a little bit, because if you look very close to, say, the right-hand ear of the animal, it's almost pure white paper where the, the acrylic had kind of repelled the watercolour. So I just wanted to... I, I like an element of the halo effect, but I didn't want a pure white uncoated paper halo there. So that's why I've kind of moved the, the watercolour around a little bit with the brush. All right, so we're back on the clock. We've got nearly three minutes to try and bring this animal to life. And with that in mind, I'm coming in with some ultramarine blue on my brush. And spraying the, the painting earlier with water, not only did that allow me to move the watercolour around, you know, let that do its own thing, but because I'm using the interactive acrylics, what that means is I'm reactivating the paint and keeping that workable even on the animal as well. So the, the interactive acrylics allow you to spray them with water so that you can blend them and not have to worry about them drying. 
And so what that means is while I work around the animal as I'm doing now, putting in these fairly dark toned highlights. So I guess they're mid-tones really, aren't they? They're not, they're not highlights in the strictest sense of the word. Some of that ultramarine that goes down will blend a little bit if I work at the paint with the underlying dark tone. And that's, you know, that's a really wonderful characteristic of these interactive paints. Now, as I'm putting these patches of blue down on the animal, just like I was when I was putting down the very dark silhouette, I'm keeping in mind the direction of my brush strokes. So in general, I'm following the way the, the, the hair on the animal falls. But in addition to that, I'm keeping in mind the quality of the edges of the patches of colour. It's not something I'm being too strict about, but if I can give the brush a little bit of a quick flick as I apply that patch of blue, then what that means is I can maybe get a little jagged edge on that, on that area of blue or a little, um, just little wispy bits coming off where the, the, the bristles of the brush just kind of whip through the edge of the blue and into the underlying dark paint. And that's a really nice way to very subtly create a texture of hair or fur if you're painting you know, an animal like this. So I'm carrying some of that colour, which I've now changed from pure blue. I've added a little bit of the alizarin crimson. So as always, if you want to know the paints I'm using and the colours I use and all the different materials, I'll list those in the description below the, the video on YouTube. Uh, or you can check out my blog on my website. Um, I list all the materials there as well. So, OK, I've got about 20 seconds left out of my 10 minutes. And as you can, as you've probably guessed, you know, I'm not going to be able to finish this and create a fully realised belted Galloway cow in 10 minutes. But I still feel I've created, you know, done a reasonable job in 10 minutes. It's, it's starting to come to life. So what I'm going to do for the rest of the video is I'll speed things up a little bit and just, um, you know, finish this painting for you, basically. So I've switched to a smaller brush. Now, I wanted to mention, uh, you know, this small brush, actually, because... For the longest time for detailed work or little wispy bits like I'm doing now, uh, this is a mixture of ultramarine blue and titanium white, I used to use small round brushes. But I've recently switched to using small flat rounded tip brushes and I feel they work rather better. They're, they're shaped like a, almost like a little shovel and consequently if you want to put down a very fine line, if you use them edge on, they're really, they're really relatively rigid for their size in that direction because you're kind of pushing along the edge of the shovel. So you almost get, you know, it's almost like using a little knife blade if you want to put in a, a fine mark. Um, and for that reason, I feel I get much better control with that type of brush than I do with a small round. It's more predictable. Um, so as I've been chatting away there, I've been working around, picking out little highlights in the hair, little highlights like the the lower lid of the eye on the left, or the edge of a nostril here and there. When I start to work in detail on uh, an animal like this, or if I'm painting a portrait, something like that, at the earliest stages of detail work, even though I've switched to a small brush, I try to stay as loose and expressive as possible. So again, it's about avoiding that tendency to draw too much. Now, I enjoy putting a little bit of extra drawing in towards the end of my paintings, but I don't want too much. So, you know, as you can see, I'm still moving the brush fairly swiftly and I'm trying to keep the marks I put down of a style in keeping with the style of marks I put down when I was using the larger brush at the early stages of the painting. Now, you know, at the moment I've switched back to the, the first brush I used as it happened. So that's the other thing I do is that even for the detail work, you can see those little wisps of white hair coming off the left hand edge of the middle stripe. They've been done with this relatively large brush just by using it edge on and moving it quickly. Now, you know, I can't always do that. You know, sometimes if I'm working on, say, the eye of this animal, it's so small that with this size brush, you know, I'm going to struggle to do anything of consequence. So I have to switch to a smaller brush then. But my sort of go-to rule is if I can, I minimise the, the finest 
most fiddly bits, the little touches of drawing, I try to keep those to the very end and I try to minimise the number of those that I do. So I try to stay loose and expressive throughout the entire painting as best I can. And, you know, sometimes it works you know, better than others. Sometimes they stay loose and expressive and the result of that is that the, the thing doesn't look all that good, you know, in, in the end. Other times I tighten up too much and, you know, perhaps it's better drawn, but the tightness kind of comes through in the finished image. So it's, it's a constant balancing act, much like the colours I'm using. I've added a little bit of the alizarin crimson now to the, you know, a bit more to the mix. I'm using some lighter blues as I work my way around. So I'm introducing some purples, little hints of red here and there. And those colours are all reflected in the, in the hair of the, of the animal in part because the colour of the hair does vary, you know, it's not just pure jet black, and in part because you're picking up little subdued reflections as well. But I have to be careful to strike that balance between having my own style and being expressive and enhancing these colours and yeah, not making it too so colourful that it just looks completely not, not in keeping with the real animal. But one of the things I, I like about the 10 minute uh, challenge is that, you know, even if you don't meet the 10 minute deadline, it's a really good little motivator to get a painting done. Just bang something out quick. Don't you haven't got time to worry about it, you know, so you just get on and do something. And then like I'm doing now, I can spend more time playing around at a more leisurely pace and, um, you know, just bring it to life and bring it to completion. So I just blocked in a little bit more of the, the background there with the interactive acrylics. Uh, put that green in, so just a mixture of the ultramarine blue, a little bit of titanium white and some cadmium yellow. And I'm keeping the, the, the ground very loose. I want to kind of mimic the looseness that I got in the sky automatically by diluting the watercolour. And you can see I'm just using the very tips of this flat brush and some pure titanium white now to add a few highlights to the central stripe. Now, as I watch this back, as I look at my painting, to be honest with you, I think I could have probably done with lengthening the body of the animal maybe a little bit more than I have. Um, I think on the whole, it's, it's, I can just about get away with it. And I think I'm creating an interesting image and hopefully a charming sort of character uh, in, in this animal. But strictly speaking, I think I should have made the body just a little bit longer. Now I'm putting in some uh, very dark shadows now, so it's back in with the burnt umber and the ultramarine blue. And again, it's a little bit of a balancing act, getting the proportions right to get the absolute darkest, darkest black there. Um, and I was struggling to go quite as dark as I wanted, so in this case I did add just a little bit of carbon black to the mix. But again, I've combined the black from the tube with some other colours. It just adds a little bit more interest to the black. If you use too much pure black out of the tube in a painting, depending on what you're wanting to do, of course, but in, in general, it can t tend to deaden the image a little bit. So much like pure white, pure black, you know, I use very, very sparingly. So, for example, if you're going back to the central white stripe on the animal, if you look at that now, hardly any of that white stripe is pure white. There's all sorts in there. There's bits of brown, bits of purple, bits of blue. And I've just you know, picked out little key highlights, as I mentioned earlier, of the pure titanium white. And it generally gives a much better effect than if you just you know, put in a band of pure white. So here's an example where I'm using the fine brush. I'm, I'm almost drawing the kind of long hairs on the ear here, but not in the sense I'm drawing every single hair. I'm just looking at them as a mass and thinking, well, these hairs are falling downwards in a curve. 
so I, I paint in some marks which fall downwards in a curve. So really when you look at an animal, even though you know it's an animal, you have to try and detach from the fact you know it's an animal and just look at it as a set of abstract shapes almost and think, well, what shape have I got there? What colour have I got there? What tone have I got there? And then do your best to forget it's a belted Galloway cow and just kind of try to replicate that pattern and structure of shapes, which is obviously easier said than done. You know, it's... Uh, that's the, you know, part of the constant challenge which makes it so much fun, I think. So obviously I've speeded things up quite a bit here to pick out key highlights around the eye and the nostrils and the subdued highlights on the nose, which are kind of a reddish orangey brown in the rest of the mouth. So as I, as I was saying, you know, I've kind of done all of my modelling now, my general modelling, and I'm having, I'm having to be a little bit more careful now, so that, that's kind of why I've speeded it up a bit. So I'm just kind of working in the key areas where I want the viewer to focus. So I'm, I'm either working in the key areas where I want the viewer to focus or I'm correcting mistakes at this stage, basically, where I sort of think, oh, I can't, you know, I can't leave that bit like that. I need to fix that. So there are different levels of highlights as well. Within a highlight, there'll be mid-tones and darker areas and, you know, very bright tones. But you can see this, uh, it's kind of a cute little little guy I've created here, this belted Galloway steer. A few purpley shadows adding in now. And there's the finished painting. Hope you enjoyed watching this one with me. I'll be doing other 10 minute challenges at some point in the future, I'm sure. Uh, if you've got any questions at all, please feel free to comment below the video. Please remember to like and subscribe. And I hope to see you next Sunday for the next episode of The Sunday Art Show. Thanks very much for watching.